Hello YouTube, Luigi here. Because of last night's smashing success visiting the uh, Edward Hopper painting Nighthawks, we're going to look at uh, another painting today. Not this one. We're going to look, but the theme here is young ladies in rowboats. I'm going to introduce work up to the painting I really want to study in depth by showing you some examples of other paintings of ladies in rowboats. This was apparently a very common theme uh, in the last century. Here we have a lady in a rowboat wearing a sun hat, big smile on her face. She's having a good time. If we zoom into the background here, we can see a tent on a hill as if this were a camping ground, a park of leisure for the wealthy who could get away from it all and go rowboating in the summer. That's really nice. This is a Monet, and you see two ladies wearing <laughs> identical dresses and identical hats. Boy, that wouldn't happen today. These two women would be clawing each other's eyes out if that happened, but women in that century were a bit more secure, I guess. It's okay to wear the same dress. Nobody really cared. Two ladies in a rowboat. Here's a lady in a rowboat. Oh, isn't this pleasant? This lady is holding a parasol. The S-O-L in parasol means sun. The parasol was to give you sun protection. It is not an umbrella. Why is this important? Well, back in these days, fair skin was a sign of nobility and wealth. Only the peasants, the peons, those who worked in the field had suntans, and so these ladies protected themselves with parasols. This is a very nice painting. I don't know who did it. Here we have another lady in, I think this is like a skiff, not a rowboat. You see the flat bottom and the, there's no real prow on it. I mean, it has oars, you can't row it, so in that sense it's a rowboat. But here's a lady, look how decked out they are. They dress so beautifully. And, and her sun hat, and there's this interesting pile of rocks here on the shore. And look at this. Because we can see water up here. I'm sorry if this is making you seasick. Because we can see water up here where my cursor is and water over here. This tells us this is a point of land. You know, a very uh, desirable piece of real estate. And this path must lead up to a, you know, a gentleman's summer home or something. Anyway, this lady is in the reeds, good place to fish, and uh, she's probably having a good time. Now look, this could be an umbrella in the boat. Anyway, here we have a lady sunbathing naked in a rowboat. Now, you'd be surprised how many ladies love to go out nude in a rowboat. Uh, at least I can demonstrate that with the next few pictures. Again, she's wearing a big sun hat, and you could just feel the heat of the sun on her backside. And I bet it feels great and warm. And it's good for her. She's having a good time. Here's a whole boatload of naked ladies in a rowboat. You have to remember, um, bathing and swimming were once synonymous. It was just bathing. The only place you could bathe, you didn't have a jacuzzi in your house. In fact, you barely had a house, was in the rivers, in the lakes, in the ponds, in the streams. So you got naked and you went into the water. The idea of swimming suits was, uh, I don't know, some fashion statement that came later, but this is how they would do it. And you can see these ladies are, two are naked. One has a sun hat. One is in a state of undress. And the others are pretty much put together. Looks like she's taking off her shoes. Now, if you look in the background, there are other bathers already in the water. We call them bathers. You can call them swimmers. But there was a time when the two words were synonymous. I think this is rather cute. They brought along a little dog. And this looks like a basket of food here. So these ladies are going to have a great day together, having a nice luncheon with the dog. And look at where they are. Isn't that lovely? Here's another naked lady about to get in a rowboat. She's got the oar in her hand. She's looking directly into the sun, but what is she really looking at? In the distance, we can see a two-masted schooner, a ship, 
maybe her lover just embarked to a distant shore and she's already missing him, already lonely, and she's pining for him, and she's weighing out the option of, do you think if I row out there naked, he'll take me aboard and take me with them? This is a strange painting in terms of technique. It's like gigantic pointillism, a combination of pointillism and fauvism. I don't know who the artist is on this. But finally, we get to the painting we want to discuss today. It's a lady in a sun hat in a rowboat. I don't know the artist. I don't know the title. My mother gave me this painting because for years it hung over her toilet in her guest bathroom in her condo in Scottsdale. What does that mean? It means every time I went to use the toilet, I'm standing up staring right at this painting. And over the years, I eventually figured it out. Now, I say that as if paintings are puzzles meant to be deciphered. And in some sense, they really are. What do we see here? What do you see here? A lady in a rowboat, right? That's what everybody sees. I saw it for years. Let's zoom in on it. Wow, she's not alone. There's a guy in jeans in front of her. You can see his big fisted hand on one of the oars. She is not alone. And yet she can't face him. Her face is diverted. She's looking backwards. Maybe at a time when her life was happier before she met this jerk. Now why do I say that? Because he's in command of the boat. He's got his hand on the oars. And yet look at the water. It's as still as a piece of glass. He's in command of this relationship, but it is going nowhere under his guidance, under his leadership. They are, what's the word? Foundering? Floundering? They're just drifting. They have no direction, no motive power, and yet he has his hands on the oars, and she's turning. She can't even face him. She's probably, you know, reflecting deeply on how did I ever get myself into this mess with this jerk? Other than that, the, the scene is pleasant. The colors are soft pastels. I don't know if this is a moon or my camera up here in the sky. You know, the, the horizon is nice. Uh, everything about this is lovely. The reflection is crisp and clean and beautiful. But basically, this is a very sad painting. It is the story of a failed relationship. So when I had all these insights into this thing, when I finally saw the other person in the boat, I took it off the wall above my mother's toilet, sat down there in her living room in Scottsdale, and said, Ma, did you ever know this? Take a look at this. And I went through the whole rap I just gave to you. And she said, you know, I've been staring at that painting for 25 years. And I never saw anything. She said, but now that you pointed out, yes, it's obvious. There's another guy in the boat, and he has his hands on the oar. Now, how do we know it's a guy? Well, look at the size of his hands, and look at his rolled up sleeve, and look at his blue jeans, as opposed to the way she's decked out in a summer dress. So this is the story of a failed relationship. The big clue is there's no ripples in the water. The boat is going nowhere. It's a floundering relationship, and she knows it. She's not happy. Her head is diverted. Her eyes are down. All the other ladies we looked at were smiling. Boy, they're out boating. They're having a great time. This lady is not having a good time. Such is the nature of many relationships. They take work. People grow apart. Sometimes the distance between them is measured in light years. This poor, lonely little girl is going through one of those. Sorry, you deserve better. We all do. Here's a picture of two people in a rowboat. That's not a failed relationship. Look at this. He's holding this hand. He's holding the other hand. There's a oar here. I don't know what this is. Could be a kerchief or something. She's got a, 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 a summer dress that actually this is pretty formal attire. He's in a, a you know a tuxedo and she's got a gown that exposes her bodice and she's got a choker yeah a choker and this must be a handbag or something anyway the theme is the rowboat this is not a failed relationship this is a failed relationship okay i wish i knew the name of this piece 
I really do. It was obvious from the back of the pa painting that my oh, I, I, after I pointed this out to her a few months later, after I went back home to New Hampshire, this painting shows up. She shipped it to me with no note, no nothing, but she obviously thought that I enjoyed it so very much that I should have it. And by the way, this is how parents should leave things to their heirs. Oh, I noticed you had a special attachment for this. I want you to have this. Rather than throw everything in a big grab bag and say, okay, you guys fight over it. And let's go back to this piece. I enjoy doing this. My father used to say, you can't walk up to the Mona Lisa and say, okay, Mona, entertain me. You have to bring half a brain. You have to bring some knowledge. You have to come with the eyes of the spirit that are open to seeing new things and old things. I didn't know this hand was there. I didn't notice these genes until I'd spent a lot of time looking at this. A this is a good painting because it tells a story. But the story isn't there for everybody. You have to bring some insight into this and extract it. Let it speak to you. This is my interpretation. You may have a totally different one. And you want to know something? And I'm a sculptor, so I can say this. I know where from I speak. Once an artist puts a work out there in the public domain, anybody's insights, anybody's interpretations, even the things that sound the dumbest, are valid because it speaks to you on some level and in some manner. And that's what I'm hoping to do with these videos, is to show you, open your eyes to looking beyond the surface and delving into the meanings that I think art should contain. To me, I like art to give me some, my soul something to chew on. If you can understand something in a glance, well, maybe that's great <laughs> home decor. But an, a, a painting or a sculpture, something that speaks to you, continues to speak to you more and more deeply over time and unravels itself, like the, like the layers of an onion, that's what I really, really look for in a work of art. All right, everybody, the mysterious lady in a mysterious painting by a mysterious artist, and I wish I had more information for you. God bless you. Take good care. I love you all. Bye-bye.